Hi, my name is Frank Straza with the Heritage School of Woodworking. And in this video, I want to try to unlock some of the mysteries about high glue. Um, I've been using high glue more and more for my furniture making. I, my first uh, introduction to high glue was in violin making, which is one of the traditional glues used for, for building violins. Um, but my take on, on high glue is one of the reasons why we have the great violins uh, of the of the past is because they were glued with high glue. And the same with antiques as well. The reason why we have antiques is because they were glued with high glue. Well, why? Well, high glue is reversible. So if you make a mistake, you can actually fix it. Um, and it doesn't matter how old the glue is, you can actually take the joint apart using heat and uh, a little bit of moisture and such. So, but I found more advantages to using high glue. Um, one of the great advantages to using high glue is the fact that the glue will actually lubricate the joint. So I can make my joinery, whether it be a dovetail or a tenon, I can make it much tighter. Uh, and the glue will actually lubricate that joint. Whereas if you're using yellow glue, yellow glue actually seizes uh, the joint. You know, if you've ever dry fit a joint together and then you go to glue it up with yellow glue and it doesn't always seem to go the same, uh, go together as well uh, using yellow glue, well, high glue, it'll go together even better than dry fitting. So um, I want to show you a little bit about how I, I mix it up. I've got a, uh, about five pounds, actually, I've used quite a bit, but I bought five pounds here from Eugene Thorndahl. Uh, bought it in bulk. You can get this granular glue from tools for working wood, woodcraft. Uh, a lot of these uh, woodworking suppliers sell the, the uh, granular glue. But So I've got it here and um, this is 192 gram strength which is fairly typical for uh, furniture making and such. It has, uh, there's other gram strengths. Uh, in violin making we use a 315 uh, which is um, tax faster, but it's, it's a little stronger. But this stuff is, is plenty strong. Um, what I usually do is I just take a measuring cup and, and put this in, in a, a spice jar like this. Truthfully, I really don't measure that much in the glue. In this case, I'm not even really measuring the glue. I'm just scooping it into this container. Here, and I fill it up about halfway or so. And then what I want to do is I want to pour cold water over this and I want the cold water to absorb all of the glue. So I, I pour the water until it just comes over the surface of that glue and you'll notice that glue will absorb all of that water. And that's what we want. You can see down there there's still some dry granulars that glue we want that to totally absorb and once that does what I can do is I can take something and stir it up um, you know to try to make sure that it gets all the way down in there sometimes if you have a lot of the dried glue the water won't get all the way down to the bottom it's important that all of that glue is soaked up by the water and you can see there now it's a uh, kind of this paste uh, or mushy kind of paste, if you will. And at that point, I'm going to put it into a glue pot. And there's different glue pots available. This is one that you can, that's, uh, you can buy. It's fairly uh, easily obtainable, but uh, this is just a standard glue pot. But what I've done differently here is I've put water inside this. This is a double boiler. Um, this heats it. And what some folks will do is they'll just put the glue right inside this Part right here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put water right inside of here, and then I put this spice uh, container here, which is plastic, by the way, which is important. I like to use plastic because uh, the glue will actually chip the glass. Uh, you can use glass, but the glue can chip it, and uh, it's a little bit harder to clean it off of the glass. So I put the plastic container in here. The other advantage to using this plastic container is the fact that it has a lid which um, if, if you don't have a lid on high glue, it'll dry out. So I'll just keep that in there for, um, you know, for a 
probably about 15 minutes or so till it till it cooks. The longer it cooks, the better. You know, it might be 30 minutes or so before it's it's good and uh, well cooked. Okay, I want to show you the consistency of the glue once it's been cooked for a little while here. And uh, it's stirring up nicely, but one of the tests is I can take this and if it runs off of the brush like this without just, just a nice continuous run right off of the brush, that's what we want. That's nice. It's a nice consistency, a good hot glue. Now, one of the disadvantages to high glue is that it, it can tend to gel up fairly fast. So, it's helpful to work in a heated shop or to even preheat the joints. Sometimes I'll use a heat gun just to preheat the joints. Um, another way to extend the working time of the glue is to add some urea. And this is some, let's see, this is just... Uh, some urea 4600. I actually found this on Amazon. Five pounds of it. It's like ten dollars or something. So this will last me uh, probably two lifetimes. So if you need any urea, you know where to come. Uh, now the key here is not to add too much of this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon to about a quarter of a cup of glue. That's what I found works pretty well, but on Eugene Thorndall's website, he he has a, a chart that has some of the descriptions of how much um, urea to add to the glue to extend the work. So I just take a, a half a teaspoon here and just pour that right into there. And what happens is those, as the glue is cooked and warm, the uh, these things will just dissolve in that in that hot glue. And uh, once it's dissolved well, then you just store it and stir it up well, and uh, that will extend the working time of the glue. Okay, one of the great things about hide glue is, unlike any other glue, you can actually reuse the, your waste glue. That is, if you have some squeeze out, excess glue coming out of a joint, look at this. So you can come right over here and just take that. This is still kind of in a gel-like substance here and you just put it right back in that glue bottle and you can reuse recycle the glue so no waste here look at this i can just take all of this excess glue and put it right back in there and it's easy to clean this stuff up it just comes right off but it's super strong there was a uh, a fellow that uh, works at the smithsonian as a conservator and he said that high glue was just about as strong as epoxy. It's hard to believe, isn't it? But the downside to hot glue, there is a downside, and that is that um, heat, high heat, and moisture will break down the glue. But hey, there's been uh, pieces of furniture that were made hundreds of years ago that are still held together with high glue. And if it needs to be repaired, it's easy to repair. You can just reconstitute the glue, uh, just put a fresh layer of glue right over it, it'll reconstitute itself, and you can repair your joint. So go get some hide glue, try it. I think you'll, you'll find, as I have, that you'll really enjoy using it.